Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to edit your photos like a professional. Let's get into it. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to another Lightroom editing tutorial. Just before we jump into the tutorial, I just want to mention a few things and just talk over this topic a bit more. So first of all, I just want to mention that the term professional photographer and how to edit like a professional photographer is very different from each photographer. As I'm sure you know, each photographer has their own style and that's what's unique to them. So when it comes down to it, editing professionally, there really isn't one way to do so. One thing that I have noticed though with professional photographers is that when you edit photos professionally they keep it really simple they don't over edit and I think this is one thing that people often confuse when trying to edit their photos professionally is that they'll almost over edit it and put too many colors in and too many effects and it just makes it look amateur it seems like you're trying too hard don't get me wrong professionals do spend a lot of time editing their photos but it is all in the finer details it's not changing the mass majority of the whole look and feel of the picture so as I said it's all about keeping it simple most professionals edit a lot less than you think they do. I mean, my edits take me really quickly to do, as I'm sure you guys have seen on some of my other tutorials as well, where I literally just apply my preset and adjust the lights accordingly. I don't really do much more to it. I've got my style and I stick with it. So one of the things that I have noticed with professional photographers and one thing that I do myself is sticking to the film style. And what I mean by this is using color grades or using presets that emulate old school film style looks. So proper film that went into cameras. And and the reason for doing so is film has stood the test of time. Film is timeless. You see from the earliest photos ever taken to right now, the only style that remains constant and remains in a trend almost is the film style. We've seen the teal and orange look come and go. We've seen the fairy lights. I know that's not really editing, but it comes into the, the trends that I'm talking about. We've seen all these trends come into the style of photography and it's come and go. But one thing that has remained constant and has remained constant on a lot of the bigger feeds on Instagram as well and bigger photographers out there in the world is emulating that film look even though we're shooting on digital cameras nowadays the film look is still something that resonates with a lot of people they're used to it it keeps the colors nice and natural and it doesn't make it look all weird or give it some strange effects that people might think are cool for the time period but as time moves on it's just not going to keep up with the trends and it'll be forgotten with the rest of the photos some of the best photos in the world some of the most memorable photos in the world are edited with the film look but in saying that I've been speaking a lot about editing and obviously a photograph is not all about the editing yes editing does play a big part but when it comes down to it it's the way you take the photographs and obviously all these professional photographers have their own style in the way that they shoot things so just keep in mind that with this tutorial it's not going to teach you really how to take the photos but more so how to get that edit and make the edit looking professional when it comes to actually taking the photos I think the most important things to remember are the composition and use of light and I think most importantly is the best photos in the world tell a story. Everything is about a story. That's why you see people like Casey Neistat going on about it. It doesn't matter what gear you have. It doesn't matter how you shoot it, but it's the story you tell. At the end of the day, it all comes down to the story and how it can relate to the viewer. In saying that though, I'm not gonna speak much more about this and I'm gonna jump into Lightroom and get onto the editing tutorial. All right, so jumping into Lightroom, I'm gonna start off using this photo I took of Dan Mace, who is now actually working with Casey Neistat, so pretty cool that I got to spend some time with him in Cape Town before we headed off. Really cool guy, go check him out as well. Anyway, getting into the tutorial. So what I would usually do is just apply one of my own film presets. Um, I do sell this preset pack just as a starter, so literally it just takes like one click to do it. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna do it from scratch to show you the basic settings that I would go through to achieving a nice professional film look on this photo. So just to start off, I really like the contrast in this photo, so I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit, probably up to like 10. Like I said, you really don't need to edit it that much to change the overall look and feel of the photo. What I like to do then is bring down the highlights just to retain the detail in the shadows. So I bring it down quite substantially. And then I also bring up the shadows to also see more details in the shadows. And then just to balance this out, I'll bring up the whites a bit just to make it a bit brighter and then bring down the blacks to make it a bit darker. Going on to the clarity, I'm gonna bring this up ever so slightly just to around like six. 
and then what I like to do as well is bring up the vibrance of the photo to about 20 and then simultaneously bring down the saturation just so the vibrance doesn't overpower it. So basically what the vibrance does is bring up and saturate the colors that aren't saturated already whereas the saturation is the overall saturation of the whole picture. Okay so up next moving on to the tone curve what I like to do is usually just add a super basic S curve into it bring up the highlights and then bringing down the shadows at the lower end here and then I also just like to bring up this tail end to add a bit of fade to the shadows and then I drop the highlights as well to add a bit of fade to the highlights so we can see that this is still looking quite dark in the shadows so I'm going to bring that up just a little bit and then also bring the mid-tones up just slightly and that's looking good right there. So if we toggle between the before and after, we can see it's already making some kind of difference to the photo. I'm actually gonna put the side by side so you guys can see the difference as we go. So as you can see, just a really basic, simple S curve does the trick. And if we turn this on and off, we can see how much of a difference it makes. I'm not gonna do too much more to the tone curve and I'm gonna move on to the split toning next. And what I think I'm gonna do is add a bit of brown to the shadows. It just gives it that film look. So if you just go into the shadows and click on this first one that Adobe gives you, and then bring down the saturation of that. Again, if we flick it on and off, we can see how it affects the shadows, adding that bit of bronzes. And then what I like to do in the highlights is just add a little bit of blue just to cool it off. Moving on to the color, and again, you really don't have to do too much to this, but it is all personal preference and you can do what you want to the photo to achieve the look that you want. So for the greens, I'm gonna bring the saturation down just a bit. I do like the desaturated look of the greens. And then I think I'm gonna bring the luminance up a little bit, maybe saturate that a bit more. And I'm also gonna bring it over into the yellow side to give it a bit more of the yellowish green. Looking at this now though, I do think that I wanna bring the shadows or blacks down just a bit. I feel like it needs a bit more contrast. So I'm gonna bring it to around minus 35. So up next, we're gonna go onto the detail and we really don't have to sharpen this picture that much. We can see that it is pretty sharp. I made sure that it was sharp and used manual focus to take this picture. So I'm not gonna do anything to the sharpening or the noise reduction. I think it is all good on that front. Moving on to the lens corrections, you can if you want just enable lens profile corrections. and then that it'll just take off the vignette of the lens that you're using so for this shot i was using my canon 70d with the sigma 18 to 35 1.8 so i'm going to leave that checked on for now going on to the effects i do think i can add a bit of grain to this photo i really like how it looks with the grainy effect that's looking good to me but one thing i am noticing now is that the skin tones seem to be a bit too green for my liking and not enough red pinkish hues into it so all we can do then is change the green primary hue and bring it over a bit more to the right and that should add a bit more warmth into his skin tones finally i'm just going to do some small corrections with the adjustment brushes and tools up here so i'm going to start off by just bringing a graduated filter over the bottom over here just to draw attention over to the face so on the bottom and on the left just so if we flick this on and off we can see that it just almost vignettes the picture just a bit and draws a bit more attention to his face as I said. Up next I'm going to use the adjustment brush and just zoom into his eyes over here and I like to do this for my portraits just to make the eyes stand out a bit so make the brush a bit smaller just paint over his, over the iris and then all I'm going to do is bring up the exposure just a bit not too much we don't want to make it look unnatural or like he's a ghost and then I'm gonna bring up the clarity and bring up the saturation as well. So again, if we just flick that on and off, we can see how much of a difference it makes. And once zooming out, you can see how his eyes just start to pop and you can see the clarity of it. Finally, just slight adjustments. This is just like really small things that I think need to happen. So brought the shadows down just a little bit and brought the exposure up. And I think that is good to go. I feel like that's a professionally edited photo and you could see something like that in a magazine. I am gonna make his eyes a bit brighter just looking at it now. So there we go. If we flick through it, you can see the difference in his eyes. I guess you could say it's unnatural, but people wouldn't really notice it by looking at it for the first time. So there you have it. I'm gonna save this as a preset now and make it available for you guys to download. So there we go. I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial. That was just a quick little one on how to keep your photos looking professional. I hope you guys found it useful and it was probably a lot less 
than what you think goes into editing a photo and making it look professional. So in saying that and keeping the photos nice and simple, what I have decided to do for you guys as well is provide a free preset. So the download link will be in the description. So go check it out. That'll be the film look that I use for editing this picture that you saw right now. So hope you guys like it. Hope you appreciate it. And if you did like it, please leave a like on this video. Also, if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button because maybe there's more free presets coming. So subscribe for all the presets, all of the tutorials as well as travel and adventure vlogs that I do and also some really cool cinematic movie style videos that I love making. In saying that, I'm going to end today's video. In the meantime, stay weird, don't die and make it happen. I'll see you guys in the next one.